and welcome to the next uh, lecture in the DBMS uh, course. Uh, until now, uh, we have uh, uh, seen two main uh, kinds of data models uh, when re for representing data or managing data in uh, uh, several different application contexts like uh, say whether it is insurance or banking or uh, railway reservations or company databases or so on. Uh, these two models were, the, the first was the entity relationship model or uh, uh, what is called as the ER model and the second was the relational data model. We also saw a typical uh, database design uh, process uh, and uh, placed uh, these models into appropriate positions in the process. Uh, the entity relationship model or the ER model is uh, essentially meant for human comprehension. It, uh, uh, it basically is meant for uh, uh, creating a conceptual database uh, or conceptual schema or, uh, uh, or what is termed as a logical schema of the database system and the relational data model is used for uh, the physical schema or something that is implemented on uh, uh, in the DBMS. So, uh, and both are DBMS independent models that is uh, no matter uh, which company's database that you are going to use, you can still use the same uh, uh, ER model for representing your data and even the same relational model for representing the schema that goes on to your DBMS. Now, uh, 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 we, uh, in, in this uh, session we are going to address one important uh, uh, issue. Now, are these, uh, we, we are going to ask the question, are these two different data models, ER and the relational model completely uh, uh, independent of each other or are they the same or uh, is, it, uh, is there some way uh, I can map between the, the ER uh, schema and uh, uh, the relational schema without having to uh, break my head too much essentially. Uh, that means to say uh, or uh, uh, to put it, uh, to, to take it to its uh, logical uh, extreme, can I uh, design some tools or can I design some kinds of software that uh, takes an ER diagram uh, of a given system and generates appropriate relational uh, schemata for, for the system. And we have also seen uh, in the session on functional dependencies, uh, we have seen how we can optimize a given uh, relational schema uh, up to a certain extent using some kinds of automated techniques. Uh, we have uh, we've seen uh, how to take a relation to uh, BCNF or third normal form or, or the fourth normal form and so on. So, uh, uh, suppose we want to build a tool to automate uh, this process, uh, we need to uh, be able to first uh, map between uh, an ER uh, uh, database schema and a relational schema and, uh, uh, and then use techniques from uh, 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 functional dependencies uh, to optimize this relational schema so that we can uh, build a database uh, 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 application around it. Uh, so, what we are going to study today form the underpinnings of what are called as uh, life cycle tools or database life cycle tools. There are several different life cycle tools which uh, uh, provide support uh, for the entire life cycle of a database system starting from the conceptualization of the problem to the actual implementation of the application and, uh, 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 and maintenance of the database and so on. So, before we begin, uh, uh, let us briefly summarize uh, what we have learnt about uh, ER uh, models and uh, relational models. The ER models as uh, uh, you already know is used for conceptual modeling of the database schema, conceptual modeling or uh, 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 to, to create the logical database schema. This is meant for human comprehension. Uh, this is uh, essentially uh, used to show end users uh, what you have understood about their problem domain. This is a high level database uh, design and there are no implementation uh, details about uh, th that are included as part of the uh, uh, ER model. And of course, the ER model is uh, DBMS independent and uh, uh, it is uh, made of building blocks like entities, relationships and attributes which, uh, which can be attributed to both uh, entities and relationships. In contrast, 
uh, a relational data model is uh, uh, the data model that is uh, most popularly used for physical schema design. A physical schema is, uh, is the schema that is actually implemented uh, on the computer. Therefore, the, the relational data model is uh, meant for or optimized towards uh, machine consumption. That is, uh, uh, how do we uh, uh, efficiently store data in, uh, uh, in, in my database? How do I efficiently search for a given data element? How do I efficiently update a given data element so that it does not create anomalies? Uh, how do I efficiently delete data elements again without creating any anomalies and, and, and so on? Uh, and of course, the, DB, uh, the relational data model is also DBMS independent. That is, uh, no matter what kind of database that uh, you use, you can still use the same data model uh, as far as the, the database that you are using is a, is a relational uh, database. Uh, you can use the same uh, data model to, to represent your data on the DBMS. Uh, of course, uh, 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 reality is uh, quite uh, different from uh, uh, fr from the concept of uh, DBMS independent, and uh, uh, some DBMS uh, systems may uh, uh, include more features than uh, traditionally what is supported by the relational model. Uh, the relational model also uh, uh, supports some kinds of uh, automated optimization techniques, which we have seen uh, in the session on functional dependencies, where. Uh, uh, you can optimize a given relational uh, schema, you can reason whether a given relational schema is, is optimal or not, whether it is going to create redundant uh, data in, uh, in its uh, DBMS or whether it is going to create some kind of uh, anomalies during updation and deletion and so on. And uh, how we can uh, systematically uh, change the database schema without changing the correctness, but increasing the overall uh, efficiency in terms of uh, uh, retrieval and updates. Uh, wh and what are the building blocks of the relational uh, model? Uh, we have relations uh, which, uh, uh, which, which comprise of uh, several different attributes and the notion of keys uh, forms uh, a, a very crucial role or plays a very crucial role in the relational uh, database model. Let us come back to the, the ER model and look at uh, some of the notations uh, which will require if you have to uh, 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 if you have to study translation into ER models. Uh, the entities uh, are uh, <coughs> represented using rectangles and uh, a strong entity type uh, that is uh, uh, an entity type which uh, has its own key attribute and which represents uh, a physical or which represents some kind of a, a logical uh, uh, entity uh, of, the, of the real life uh, is represented by a rectangle with solid uh, lines around it. For example, uh, the slide shows this uh, uh, entity type called employee which uh, depicts all objects of uh, type employee which, uh, which are present in the uh, present uh, current system. On the other hand, uh, we also have what are called as weak entities. Weak entities are those which do not have an existence of their own uh, or uh, uh, without being associated with a strong entity type. Uh, the slide shows the example of an insurance record. An insurance record does not mean uh, anything unless it is associated with some person. Uh, in, a, uh, in a company, for example, an employee. Therefore, uh, we have to, when we talk about insurance record, we have to say whose insurance record and so on. Okay. So, that, that is the general uh, idea and uh, uh, more specifically, the insurance record uh, entity type uh, does not have any key attribute. It has to be uh, associated with uh, with the strong entity type called employee, uh, which in turn has the key attribute. Uh, therefore, such uh, weak entity types are uh, depicted using uh, dashed lines or dotted lines uh, for the rectangle. We then have the relationship type, uh, for example, a relationship called handles, so employee handles project or something like that, uh, uh, which, uh, which is uh, represented by a diamond and uh, a, a normal relationship type is represented by a diamond using uh, solid lines, whereas uh, 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 what are called as identifying relationship types. Uh, that is the relationship types that identify uh, a weak entity or provide an identity for weak entities by associating them with strong entities. Uh, they are uh, shown with double lines uh, in the diamond. Entities and attributes uh, are uh, associated uh, or entities and relationships are uh, associated with attributes uh, which are uh, some values in a given domain. Uh, attributes are uh, depicted using ovals. And a normal attribute or a simple attribute is depicted by an oval with a, uh, 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 with a solid line. And key attributes uh, in this example, uh, 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 an attribute called PAN or PAN number, uh, which uniquely identifies each uh, income tax payer uh, is shown as a key attribute and it is shown underlined 
saying that this uh, this attribute is a key attribute for this entity type. And then there are multi-valued attributes which uh, uh, which can have several values for the same attribute. Uh, we took an example of the color of a peacock. Now the color of a peacock is uh, uh, is actually given by several different uh, colors, uh, and uh, uh, all of which. Uh, uh, in combination form, form the color of, uh, of the bird. Uh, such kinds of attributes are depicted using uh, double lines uh, as shown in the slide here. And then there are derived attributes that is attributes whose values can be derived from other uh, attributes uh, and these are shown using dotted lines. We took an example of the age of an employee that is uh, if we know the date of, the date of birth of an employee and the current date we can derive the age of an employee. Let us also look at some definitions from the relational uh, 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 model. Uh, the relational model is based around uh, 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 the, the, the notion of a mathematical relation. Now a mathematical relation uh, is said to comprise of atomic values or atomic data values. Uh, and what is atomic uh, data value? A data value is called atomic if it cannot be subdivided into smaller values. For example, the age of a person. Similarly, uh, each data value is said to reside in a domain. Uh, in the ER model, a domain is also called a value set, uh, which is a term that is generally used by several uh, uh, people. Uh, and uh, in the relational model, usually the term domain is used, uh, which is going to uh, 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 which, which is going to specify the range uh, of values that uh, a particular attribute can take. Uh, similarly, a relation schema or a relational schema is uh, is denoted by uh, a schema name that is uh, uh, in this example shown by the name R and a set of attributes in this example shown by A1, A2 until An. Uh, and each attribute uh, has a specific value that lies within the domain specified uh, as domain of AI. We have also uh, 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 defined what is known as the degree of a particular relationship. Now the degree of the relationship is, uh, is simply the number of attributes uh, in its relation schema. Uh, if you remember uh, the same uh, definition of the degree of a relationship also applied to the ER model. That is a relationship diamond uh, can be a binary relationship or a ternary relationship, a unary relationship or a nary relationship. That is it can, uh, uh, it can be associated with 1, 2, 3 or uh, any number of entity types. Uh, <coughs> and uh, 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 the, the slide shows that the relation uh, is actually uh, 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 is actually a subset of the Cartesian product of all of the domains that, that form the attributes. In the relational model, the notion of keys plays uh, play a very crucial role, especially uh, we saw in the notion uh, in, in the in the process of uh, uh, decomposing relational uh, uh, schema in order to make them uh, normalized or uh, uh, conformant to uh, let us say BCNF or uh, third normal form or fourth normal form and so on. Uh, so let us revisit the notion of keys in, in a little more detail and uh, uh, keys are again uh, very important when, uh, uh, when we translate from uh, an ER model to a, a relational model. We have to be uh, aware which attributes are the key and which attributes uh, are the foreign key and so on. So a key constraint uh, 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 in the relational model uh, es es essentially defines the notion of a super key which is uh, a set of attributes of a relation which can uniquely identify each, uh, 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 each tuple in the relation that is uh, each instance of uh, uh, the relation. And uh, a key or, or a minimal super key is something uh, which, uh, 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 which is minimal in a sense that if you, re, uh, if you remove uh, any element of the minimal super key, it ceases to be a super key anymore. And there is also the uh, well known entity integrity constraint in, uh, in the relational uh, model which says that the primary key uh, of, uh, uh, of a given tuple may never be null. The primary key is, uh, is the minimal super key that uh, is going to be used uh, to uniquely identify. Uh, a, a given tuple in the relation. And we also saw the notion of referential integrity which is again a, a, an important uh, issue in, uh, uh, in the relational data model. And the referential integrity constraint says that uh, if uh, uh, a tuple of uh, one relation refers to uh, another tuple of another uh, 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 relation, it should refer to an existing tuple. That means uh, foreign keys, that is keys. Uh, uh, of primary keys of another relation embedded uh, into the uh, into the tuple of uh, yet another relation should uh, refer to uh, tuples that already exist in the uh, uh, in, in the first relation. So the foreign key constraints uh, 
are shown in this slide here that is first of all the attribute of the foreign key uh, or, or the domain uh, of the foreign keys should be the same as the domain of the primary key of the uh, other uh, relation and uh, they have to refer to uh, existing tuples in the other relation. And we also saw that uh, uh, relations can be uh, uh, are, uh, are popularly viewed as tables and which is what is the notion used in SQL that is a relation uh, of the firm student with uh, three attributes roll number name and lab can be uh, specified in the form of a table uh, with the name student uh, and uh, three kinds of columns called roll number name and lab. So, uh, so, so let us now come to uh, the, the issue of uh, mapping between a given ER model and, uh, 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 and a relational uh, database model. Now, uh, uh, I, uh, I, had, I had said in the beginning of this uh, session uh, uh, why uh, this such, such a mapping is important. Uh, uh, there are several uh, different commercial uh, tools that are available which are called as life cycle tools of uh, uh, DBMS um, uh, uh, design. Uh, a life cycle tool uh, provides uh, support in several or, uh, or in most of the phases of a typical database life cycle. That means the tool should be able to or using the tool you should be able to uh, create uh, a logical schema, uh, talk to your end user saying this is what I have understood by your requirements uh, of, uh, 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 of, your, uh, uh, of your system. These are the different data elements, these are the different functionality requirements that, that form uh, your system and so on. And then uh, uh, using the same uh, tool you should be able to create a physical schema uh, from the logical schema by automatically translating them to, to whatever extent possible. Uh, in practice it is not possible to completely automate this process that is automatically generate uh, a relational model and uh, uh, optimize it. Uh, uh, sometimes some kind of human intervention is necessary uh, uh, in order, uh, when, when the human uh, knows some domain knowledge that cannot be captured into the ER model. Uh, but there are several such tools an example is, uh, is the tool called ERWIN from, from Computer Associates which, uh, uh, which provide such a support for automatically translating between ER and uh, the, the relational model. So let us see how we can go about uh, uh, such a translation. The first case uh, that we are going to take is the case of a simple relation or, or a simple entity. Okay. So the uh, slide here shows a simple uh, entity type called department and it has uh, three different uh, attributes department name, department ID and manager. And uh, the department ID obviously is the key uh, uh, or the key attribute of this department. Now uh, given such a relation it is fairly obvious to see uh, given such an entity type it is fairly obvious to see that uh, it can be translated into a relation uh, of the type department that is also shown in the slide here uh, just below the figure. So uh, this uh, ER uh, model can be uh, 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 translated into such a relation uh, where the name is called department and uh, it, which has three different attributes department ID, department name and manager. And also note that the key attribute is retained that is the department ID which is the key attribute of uh, uh, this entity here becomes the primary key of the relation that is formed. So this is straightforward that is uh, as long as we have a simple uh, uh, entity type uh, with uh, simple attributes uh, note that the attributes are also simple there are no multi-valued attributes or composite attributes and so on and um, uh, it, it can be translated in a straightforward fashion to the uh, relational model. What happens if we have a composite attribute? Remember that a composite attribute is something that is made up of sub attributes. A composite attribute is different from a multi-valued attribute that is a multi-valued attribute is something which can have many values for the same attribute. The color of a bird can, uh, can have several different colors. On the other hand a composite attribute is made up of uh, two or more other attributes uh, each having its own domain. For example, uh, the slide shows a composite attribute called department ID uh, for the same example of a department entity type. So the department ID is the attribute here which has uh, which is a composite attribute which in turn is made up of two other attributes called location ID and uh, region number and so on. Okay. Now a uh, location ID could, could, have a, uh, could have a different domain let us say uh, uh, let us say location IDs are uh, given uh, alphabets like A, B, C, D and so on and region number are given numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay. So both of them may have different domains and uh, th uh, they combine to form the attribute called uh, department ID which in turn is, uh, is also the primary key of uh, this department. 
uh, therefore we are considering two different uh, 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 aspects uh, here one is how to deal with um, um, <coughs> composite attributes and the second is what happens if the composite attribute is the key attribute of, uh, 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 of the entity type. So uh, the slide here shows, uh, 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 shows, an, shows the example of uh, and uh, 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 shows how we can translate this into a relational model. Uh, firstly the, the name department of the entity type becomes the name of the relation called department and all the other simple attributes are retained. Department name is retained as department name, manager is reta retained as manager. Uh, and only uh, here for the composite attribute the department ID never ap uh, appears here. Uh, it is just that all the simple components of the, comp uh, of the composite attribute are, uh, are straight, uh, straight away uh, loaded into this uh, relation. That is location ID co comes here and region number comes here and uh, in fact if either of these two let us say location ID or region number uh, is again a composite attribute and it has uh, some more attributes just take all the simple components of the co uh, composite attributes. So, so do not take region number uh, and uh, just take whatever is the simple component of, uh, of this uh, region number and add it to the uh, relation here. And all of these uh, simple components which form uh, the, the, uh, the, the composite attribute which is the key becomes the primary key. That is the, 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 the primary key here is a composite key in, uh, made up of uh, uh, two, or, uh, two or more uh, different uh, attributes uh, which combinedly uh, uh, identify or help in identifying a tuple of the relation. The next example that we are uh, going to see uh, is the example of how to map relationships. Uh, first of all uh, let us look at the following relationship that is shown in this slide here. Uh, what characteristics can we, uh, 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 can we ascribe to the relationship that is shown here? Uh, firstly uh, uh, we notice that the relationship here uh, is a one is to one relationship that is uh, one employee is associated with one insurance record okay? or rather the other way around in this case that is uh, one insurance record is associated with one employee and uh, have a look at the association as well. The association uh, or, or the relationship type uh, is, uh, is, is an identifying relationship type. Uh, that means the relationship type called insurance details shown in the slide here uh, is used to identify or provide an identity for the insurance record by associating it with an employee. And also the, uh, the insurance record has a total participation uh, in this relationship. That is insurance record has no uh, uh, existence uh, without uh, this relationship. Okay. Now, uh, how do we uh, translate um, uh, uh, tr translate such uh, entity types? Okay. Now, uh, uh, so, so essentially, the, the the idea here is what? Uh, how do we translate uh, 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 insurance record into the relational model? Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so for weak entity types, the uh, uh, the translation is shown uh, uh, here in the in the slide below. Just create a relationship. Uh, uh, or, or uh, just create a relation of the same name as the entity type, but since it does not have uh, 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 a, a, a key to, uh, because weak uh, entity types do not have key attributes. So since it does not have a key attribute, use the key attribute from employee uh, with which it is associated with uh, and take that key attribute and uh, make it into the key attribute of, uh, uh, of insurance record. However, note that since PAN number uh, here is also the primary key for employee, uh, this has to be made uh, as a foreign key of insurance record. That means uh, uh, whenever we are, uh, we are updating uh, or altering the table, uh, we have to use the cascade option. Uh, uh, <coughs> whenever uh, let us say the, the, the employee type is uh, updated or deleted. Uh, uh, that means to say that uh, if uh, if the employee relation is deleted, uh, deleted from the database, uh, uh, this uh, uh, has, has to in turn delete all the insurance record uh, relations uh, from the database itself because uh, insurance records do not have any existence uh, without the, the employee uh, records. Okay? So, uh, so, so the three steps here uh, in, order, uh, in order to translate a weak entity type is uh, to first identify or uh, is to first locate the identifying relationship. Uh, and see uh, which entity type is this weak entity type associated with and uh, use the primary key of that entity type as the key for uh, the, the, uh, the, the weak entity type or, or the record of uh, or the relation for the weak entity type and make it into a foreign key 
of uh, uh, of this uh, uh, entity type and use cascade options whenever uh, updations or uh, uh, deletions are performed on the strong entity, uh, entity type. Let us uh, uh, move on with uh, um, uh, translating relationships. Uh, so, how do we translate? Uh, let, let us take the uh, simplest form of relationship again, the one is to one relationship. Uh, we saw uh, what happens, uh, uh, or how do how do we translate one is to one relationships when uh, weak entity types are considered? Okay. Now, let us consider uh, an entity type which is not weak, but uh, still invo uh, is involved in a total participation. That this is uh, shown in the figure here. The figure shows uh, a, a relationship type called managed by which relates two different uh, uh, entity types that is a department and manager and uh, there are attributes relevant attributes are shown for each of them that is uh, the department uh, has uh, a key attribute called department id and a manager has a key attribute called employee number and the relationship itself uh, uh, has a key attribute called secretary that is a secretary is assigned for a department that is managed by a manager that is uh, uh, the, the secretary attribute uh, does not have uh, uh, an existence without an existence of this relationship that is if uh, if a department is not managed by a manager then there is no secretary that is associated with uh, with this okay now how do we translate this the translation is again uh, shown in the slide uh, below <coughs> so first create uh, uh, create uh, an entity type uh, or uh, create a relationship uh, 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 create a relation called manager. L let me re uh, repeat this again. Uh, for this uh, for this relationship, create a relation uh, 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 in the in the RDBMS uh, model called manager with the following um, uh, uh, attributes. Now you might be wondering why should we create the the uh, why should we create a relation called manager? Why not department? Okay. Now uh, let us. Uh, 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 think about it a little further. Uh, see in this uh, slide here that manager is uh, uh, is a strong entity type. It is not a weak entity type. However, it uh, is involved in a total participation in this uh, relationship type. What is the total participation? The total participation is that uh, the entity type does not have any existence without uh, uh, being participating uh, in a relationship type of this kind. Okay. So, uh, what it essentially means that uh, means here is that a manager has no existence that is a manager would probably be just an employee. Uh, so, so, a manager would, uh, would have no existence unless he or she is associated or uh, is given a department to manage. Okay. So, uh, so it, is the, uh, it is the entity type that is involved in the, uh, 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 in the total participation is taken as the primary entity type or, or the base entity type uh, 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 primary relation ca called manager and then uh, employee number becomes the key here that is the, the key for uh, manager okay. and the department id which is the primary key for uh, department becomes a foreign key in manager and whatever uh, uh, attributes uh, are associated with the relationship itself become uh, attributes of this. Uh, relation here that is of the manager relation here okay so therefore the manager relation has a primary called uh, primary key called employee number and uh, a foreign key called department id uh, uh, note that uh, uh, this makes uh, 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 this makes sense when we note that manager uh, is a, uh, uh, does not have any existence without this relationship that is uh, 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 refer to the problem of uh, uh, referential integrity uh, in uh, relational data model. What is the referential integrity uh, stipulate? Whenever uh, a foreign key refers to a tuple in another relation, the tuple uh, should exist. That is, it should refer to an existing tuple in the other relation. Now, uh, if we had made department as the base entity or, or the base relation here, we cannot use uh, employee number as uh, uh, as the uh, uh, as a foreign key because uh, the manager relation won't even exist uh, before this this relation that is managed by is formed. Okay. On the other hand, department has an independent existence without uh, whether or not uh, a manager is associated with it. Uh, therefore, uh, 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 th that forms the rationale behind uh, why we choose the uh, entity type which uh, entity type which. Uh, 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 which is involved in total participation as a base entity type for the translation. 
So uh, let us summarize uh, uh, this uh, uh, the previous slide once again. So in, in any one is to one binary relationship between types S and T, choose one of them as the base relation. In case one of them uh, is involved in a total participation, choose that as the base. If uh, neither department nor manager were to be involved in total participation, it does not matter which uh, you are going to choose as the base uh, relation. Include the primary key of uh, primary key of the other entity type as a foreign key in the base relation and include any relationship uh, attributes as attributes of the base relation. Consider the um, uh, example shown in the slide uh, here. What happens if uh, 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 in a one is to one relationship both uh, entity types uh, 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 that is uh, <coughs> both entity types that are participating in this one is to one binary relationship are involved in a total participation. Take a look at the slide here. Uh, the slide shows two entity types project and consultant okay and each project is uniquely identified by a project ID and each consultant is uniquely identified by his or her PAN number. And there is a relationship called a re relationship type called consultation, uh, which has uh, its own attribute called secretary. And it's a one is to one <coughs> relationship, and both of them are involved in a total participation. That is, a project has no existence unless uh, uh, it uh, it is being consulted by a consultant, and a consultant has no existence unless he or she is associated with the project. So neither of them uh, will have a independent existence without the other. Okay, in such cases. Uh, 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 we, we cannot identify any relation as the base relation. If we identify project as a base relation and try to use PAN number of the consultant as the foreign key, then referential integrity uh, could be violated. It is the same in the other way around as well. If we uh, uh, use consultant as the base relation and try to use project ID as the uh, foreign key, again uh, there is a chance of violating the referential integrity. In such cases, the, the simplest way is uh, to take the relationship type, in this case the consultation uh, as the base relation. That is uh, uh, form a relation uh, uh, called consultation and use project ID and PAN as, uh, 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 as the primary key of consultation. And then uh, all of the attributes from uh, both of them will become attributes of this relation. So uh, in case uh, both entities in a one is to one binary relationship are both, uh, are, uh, are, uh, uh, are both in total participation, then we merge uh, both of the entity types into one, usually in the name of the relationship, that is uh, uh, in the name of the relationship called consultation in the previous example. Now let us see how do we map uh, one to n relationship. What is a one is to n relationship that is uh, n entities of one of the entity types could be associated with one entity of the other entity type. That is uh, it, it forms some kind of a uh, tree uh, relationship that is one entity being associated with n different entities of the other type. So uh, the slide here shows such an example that is employee works in department that is uh, employee is an em uh, entity type. So n different employees can work in one uh, department that is uh, one department may have uh, uh, several employees but each employee is associated with only one department. And of course there are uh, keys called uh, employee number for uh, employee and uh, department ID for department. Uh, the slide also shows how we can uh, uh, reduce this uh, to a, uh, to a uh, uh, relation. Uh, the, the simplest way is to take the uh, entity type on the n side of a relationship. Okay. So in this case the employee, so <coughs> take this as the base that is uh, translated into a relation called employee and uh, the, the primary key uh, of employee becomes the key of the employee uh, entity type here and the department ID becomes a foreign key here. Okay. So this is uh, uh, as simple as uh, that, that is for, for each uh, binary one is to n relationships identify the relation uh, uh, S that represents the entity type on the N side. Uh, why, why is this so? Because uh, each entity type on the, uh, on the N side uniquely identifies a department uh, that is uniquely identifies the entity type of, on the other side. Okay? Uh, therefore we can use uh, the primary key on the, uh, uh, of the entity type on the other side as a foreign key uh, in, the, uh, in the base relation. Therefore use this as a base relation and create a relation uh, uh, including the key of the other entity type as the foreign key. 
how do we map uh, MN relationships? Now, what is an MN relationship? An MN relationship uh, essentially says that uh, M different uh, entities of the first type can be associated with N different entities of the second type. Therefore, there is no unique identification that is given an employee in the previous case, uh, one could uniquely identify the department with which the employee is working in uh, because each employee can, can work in uh, at most one department. On the other hand here, let us say uh, uh, the, a, relation called, a relationship called uh, deputed to. So, uh, an employee could be deputed to several departments let us say okay so uh, so m different employees can be deputed to uh, n different uh, departments and of course uh, employee has uh, has employee number as the key and department has department uh, id as the key and so on okay and uh, deputed to also has uh, 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 has a uh, uh, has an attribute called a record number which uh, uh, maintains a record of uh, which employee is deputed where and so on okay so in order to uh, uh, translate such uh, um, uh, relationships, uh, note, uh, uh, note the steps that are shown in the slide here. There are three different uh, relations that are, uh, that are formed. Uh, one is the employee relation, okay, that is one of the entity types uh, of this uh, relationship type. So, so the employee relation uh, is formed with employee number as the primary key and, and all the other attributes that, that uh, form the employee uh, entity type. Similarly, a department relationship uh, uh, relation is formed with uh, department ID as the, uh, uh, as the primary key and all other uh, uh, relations and then uh, a separate relation uh, is created for the relationship type itself. So deputed to becomes a separate relation by itself and then uses employee number and department IDs uh, as uh, foreign keys uh, and also as the primary keys of this, uh, of this relation. Uh, and uh, whatever uh, attributes that belong to the <coughs> that belong to the uh, relation uh, becomes uh, uh, part of uh, or be belong to the relationship type uh, becomes part of the relation that is created here. That is, uh, uh, deputy, uh, the, the record number attribute uh, becomes uh, one of the attributes of deputed to relation. Okay. Uh, note that uh, we cannot move this recorded uh, record number that is the attribute of this relation to either the employee or uh, a department because it does not uniquely identify either employee or department. Uh, each employee could be associated with uh, n different record numbers uh, because they're, they're they could be associated with n different departments and similarly each department could be associated with uh, m different record numbers because m different employees could be working uh, in the term uh, uh, in the department. So this slide shows, uh, uh, summarizes how uh, uh, m is to n relationships are uh, translated. Uh, in a m is to n binary relationship, it is not possible to collapse the relationship into one of the entity types because uh, neither of the entity types uniquely identifies the other entity type. Therefore, a separate relation is required uh, and uh, usually this is in the name of the rela relationship type itself. Okay? So a separate relation is required uh, uh, in order to complete the mapping. And of course, the cascade option should be used whenever updates are performed on any of the uh, uh, relations pertaining to the entity types. That is, uh, whenever, the, uh, <coughs> whenever the entity type called employee or department is updated or, or deleted, then these uh, 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 changes should be cascaded uh, so that they are reflected in the deputed to relationship as well. That is, if employees, uh, employee entity type is, uh, is deleted, then of course the deputed to relationship uh, should also be deleted. Now one might ask the question, uh, 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 is it possible to, uh, 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 is it possible to use the strategy that is uh, use the relationship type as the base relation rather than any of the participating entity types. Uh, can we use this strategy for mapping 1 is to 1 and 1 is to n relations as well because m is to n is simply a generalization of 1 is to 1 and uh, uh, 1 is to n relationships, right. So of course it is possible that is uh, 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 take the example of uh, employee works in department that is uh, n different employees working in uh, one department. Uh, we can still create uh, a separate uh, uh, relation uh, called works in where uh, uh, it can use the employee number and the department ID as the foreign keys uh, of, of this relation. However, uh, 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 it, it, it just creates uh, a, an extra relationship uh, or extra relation in the, in the database that is, uh, that is totally unnecessary. 
but uh, th this is sometimes uh, actually attractive uh, to use than, than, than collapsing the relationship into one of the uh, relations especially where uh, uh, especially if you have to avoid null values that is uh, especially if you have to uh, 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 especially if you have cases where there are some employees uh, who do not work in any department. Uh, if n different if an employee can be associated with at most one department it means that uh, uh, an employee can also be associated with zero departments so in that case the the department id uh, field of uh, of employee would be null uh, it does not violate uh, referential integrity because remember that uh, referential integrity says that uh, a foreign key should refer to an existing tuple or else should be null therefore uh, it does not violate uh, referential integrity, but creates a lot of null values in the database uh, schema, uh, in, in the database itself. So if you have to avoid null values, it is actually preferable to use the relationship type as the base relation when performing the translation. How do we map multi-valued attributes? Uh, we have seen how to map composite attributes and uh, uh, simple attributes and keys and so on. But what happens if there are multi-valued attributes? Composite attributes uh, 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 are different from multi-valued attributes uh, in, the, in the sense that uh, each of them can have several different uh, domains that is it is just a combination of uh, several simple attributes. So we just open up the combination when we are, uh, uh, when we are translating a composite attribute uh, and then include all the simple attributes that, that form part of the composite attribute. On the other hand, uh, a multi-valued attribute is not a uh, uh, is not a uh, composition of several uh, uh, several sub attributes instead it is an attribute that can uh, uh, take on several values instead of one value uh, and the example uh, the slide shows is that of a bird okay so uh, a bird has a multi valued attribute called color okay so what is the color of this bird a bird could have several colors it, it need not have just one color and of course there is a primary key called species which which identifies each bird uh, uh, uniquely so in order to translate multi-valued attributes, uh, uh, take a look at the lower half of the slide which shows uh, uh, two different relations uh, which, which make up this translation. The first relation shows, uh, 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 shows uh, uh, a relation called bird uh, with uh, species as the primary key and uh, all other attributes except the color attribute, okay, all other attributes of, uh, of the entity, uh, entity type called bird. And then a separate relation is created called bird colors where uh, species and color are both, uh, 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 are both included and are both uh, uh, part of the key that is uh, uh, combinedly define the key of this bird. Therefore we say that bird species X has uh, color Y, uh, X has color Z, uh, X has color A and, and, and so on. Okay? So the, the color attribute may be repeated in, uh, in uh, uh, in several uh, or uh, several tuples or rather the species uh, attribute may be repeated in several tuples uh, one once for each different color that the bird can take now, and both of them that is species and color become the primary key uh, for bird colors. So for each multi-valued attribute uh, uh, of a given entity type uh, we have to create a separate relation uh, that has a primary key of S. Uh, paired with all possible values that the multi-valued attribute can take and of course the cascade option should be used for referential integrity uh, uh, for the, uh, on the bird uh, 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 relation that is whenever the bird relation is deleted or updated the corresponding changes has to be made in bird colors as well. How do we map binary relationships? Uh, until now we have been looking at uh, binary relationships. What happens when there are uh, energy relationships and uh, uh, different uh, uh, entities forming part of the relationship? The slide here shows such an example that is uh, the, the uh, standard example of supplier supplies part to project. Okay? So uh, there is a supplier uh, who is uniquely identified by the, the supplier uh, or, or the sales tax registration number or something ST uh, reg number and there is a project that is uniquely identified with project ID and there is a part that is uniquely identified by part ID. And then the supplies relation which uh, uh, relates all of these three different entity types. So uh, the, uh, the simple way of translating this uh, is uh, to use a separate relation called supplies uh, <coughs> uh, as the base and of course uh, separate relations uh, each for supplier, project and part with their corresponding uh, um, 
uh, primary keys and the supplies relation which, uh, uh, which has the primary keys of, uh, uh, of, of each of these relations as the foreign key of this, uh, uh, of this relation. So for each, uh, for each energy relationship of, uh, uh, of any type R where, where n is greater than 2, uh, we have to create a new relation S to, to represent this relationship uh, 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 to, to represent this relationship type R. And of course, the, the uh, primary keys of, of the participating relations uh, become foreign keys uh, in, uh, in this new relation. And uh, the cascade option should be used for all of the uh, uh, relations uh, that uh, correspond to the entity types that uh, uh, participate in this uh, relationship. What happens if uh, one of the relations in, uh, uh, in, in an energy relationship type is a weak entity type? That is, uh, let us say part is a weak entity type. There is no existence for part unless it is associated with a supplier uh, supplying it to some project. In that case, uh, we have to identify. Uh, 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 we have we have to first. Uh, uh, it, uh, uh, we have to first identify the um, entity type which gives an existence to part. Okay, and the part uh, uh, relation here uh, has only foreign keys. It does not have any primary keys. But the supplies relationship does not change. That is, uh, it doesn't have any uh, part ID. Uh, it, it just has. A, uh, it, it simply has the. Uh, uh, supplier uh, uh, primary key and the project primary key without the part primary key. There, therefore, uh, 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 therefore, we get two different uh, uh, relations that have uh, foreign keys and, uh, and they do not have uh, uh, their own primary keys. So, uh, so that, uh, uh, that brings us to the uh, end of the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this session that uh, uh, talked about, uh, uh, that gave a, uh, uh, that, that talked about how we can uh, uh, map uh, ER models into, uh, uh, in, into uh, uh, relation, uh, relational uh, uh, database models uh, using several different rules. And of course, this is not a comprehensive set of rules because there are uh, uh, several other sets of rules uh, used for example in uh, uh, derived attributes or, uh, 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 or uh, enhanced uh, ER models like uh, uh, generalization and specialization which, which are not uh, covered here. But uh, all of them uh, uh, in totality are used uh, 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 to, to, uh, to create the basis for any kind of a, uh, a tool, a software tool that can translate between a given uh, ER schema and its uh, corresponding relational schema. So uh, this slide shows a summary of uh, uh, each of these mappings that is it gives a set of thumb rules saying uh, if this is what uh, is given in the ER model then what happens in the uh, relational model. Okay. So in an ER model uh, if an entity type is given then uh, a corresponding entity relation that is a relation in the name of the entity, uh, entity type is created. Uh, if a uh, 1 is to 1 or a 1 is to n binary relationship uh, is given then uh, we create corresponding foreign keys from, from the n side to the 1 side or, or from the weak entity type to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the strong entity, uh, entity type in this relation. Okay? So we create a relation and create appropriate foreign keys from. Uh, if a m is to n relationship type is uh, given as shown in the slide here, then we create a, uh, 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 then, then we create a uh, relation uh, with the name of the relationship type. Okay, so, so, so there is a uh, within quotes which is shown as relationship relation uh, with two foreign keys that is uh, one for each uh, uh, entity, entity type that participates in this relation. If an NRA relationship type is given, uh, uh, it is still the same uh, strategy that is we create a relationship relation with n different foreign keys that is uh, one for each uh, 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 entity type or, or rather uh, uh, n different foreign keys as long as uh, these en entity types are strong entity types. Uh, if there is a simple attribute in a, uh, in a ER model that, that simply becomes an attribute in one of the relations in the relational model. If it is a composite attribute in the ER model then it becomes a set of simple attributes that is you take the simple part of all component uh, composite attributes that is just uh, 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 go on finding uh, uh, the, the, the simple attributes that, that form the composite attribute and then uh, make all of them uh, uh, as part of uh, th this uh, relation. If it is a multi-valued attribute then uh, we need to create a separate relation uh, and a foreign key that is uh, you have to associate the primary key of the base relation. Uh, uh, with uh, each possible value uh, of the multi-valued attribute. 
if it is a value set it becomes a domain uh, uh, value set in the in the er model the, it becomes a domain and a key attribute in the in, in the primary uh, in, in the er model will become uh, either a primary or a secondary key in the uh, uh, in, in the relational model so that brings us to the uh, uh, to the end of this session Thank you.